Let's do some math for fun here with this question from one of my subscribers. He says, if x plus 1 of x is equal to square root of 3, then we're trying to find out the value for x to the 1024th power plus 1 over x to the 1024th power. If you haven't already, you should pause the video and try this first. Okay, how did you guys do this? And in fact, I have two ways and I will show you guys both in this video. Here is the first way, right here. And it's more of that we will have to use some trick business right here, okay? I'll show you. First of all, when I see this right here, I want to solve for x. So I can look at this and let's multiply everything by x. So we will have x squared plus 1 and that's equal to square root of 3 times x. And now you see this is a quadratic equation. I can move this to the other side, so that's x squared minus square root of 3x and then plus 1 and that's equal to 0. How can we solve x? Well, we can use the quadratic formula, right? So x is equal to negative b is negative square root of 3 and then we plus minus square root of b squared which is negative square root of 3 squared minus 4 times a which is 1 and c is also 1 and then this is all over 2 times a which is 1 right here. And then we can of course just simplify this a little bit because now this times that is just positive square root of 3 and let me just say this is over 2 like that okay and then I will have the plus minus okay this is going to be 3 minus 4 which is negative 1 inside of the square root and you know that's going to give you i so we will have pretty much just i but that's i over 2 so I will write it down as 1 half i like this and as you can see we have two possible x values. The first one is a plus version and the second one is a minus version, right? And the deal is that I will just have to plug in one of the x value and then into this x here and then just work it out. Okay, hmm. This is a complex number and I will be dealing with big power. So the deal is that let's try to use Le Théorème de, de Moivre. Yeah, that one. And of course, in order for me to use that, I will have to change this into the polar form. And now you might be wondering, are we going to take the plus version or the minus version? And the truth to that is, it doesn't really matter in this question. I will explain why later. But for now, I will just say, let z, because we're dealing with complex numbers, so let me just say z as the co following complex number. Namely, I will just take square root of 3 over 2 plus 1 half i like this. If you take the minus version, it's actually going to work out the same, but I will show you guys that later. I will change this into the polar form for you guys. And to do so, here let's look at the complex plane. As you know, this right here is the real part, this is the imaginary part. So we will have positive square root of 3 over 2 right here, and then positive 1 half, so that means you go up like this, 1 half. So here is where the complex number is, on the complex plane, right? Okay. We will have to figure out what's the r right here and also the theta here. For r, it's just that we take the square root of this square plus that square, so this is just square root of 3 over 2 square plus 1 half square like this. And this is just 3 over 4 plus 1 over 4, and that's 4 over 4, which is 1 in the square root, it's still 1. So in another word, this complex number is actually really cool because it's on the unit circle, right? Because r is equal to 1. And I'll show you guys why this is so cool. Anyway, the other thing we have to know is this angle here, and in fact, you are dealing with a special right triangle, 30, 60, 90, so this is just pi over 6. We are using radians because we're all adults now, again, right? Anyway, here is the deal. z, which is this complex number right here, if you want to change that into a polar form, you will first have r times the parentheses of cosine theta plus i sine theta. But since r is equal to 1, so it doesn't really matter, right? And I'll write it down better for you guys. z is equal to, we will just have cosine theta, which is pi over 6, and then we add it with i times sine theta, which is pi over 6. And you multiply it by the r is equal to 1, so it doesn't matter, alright? Okay. Here is the deal. If you put down the minus version right here, in fact, you are looking at the version down below, you will have the negative one half, right? That's just the complex conjugate of this complex number. 
And the truth is that in this question, you can verify this on your own. Okay, for this particular z. You know that the complex conjugate, this is the notation for that, okay? The complex conjugate, which is just equal to square root of 3 over 2 minus 1 half i right here. This is in fact equal to 1 over z. It's actually going to be the same thing, okay? And you'll just write this down. This is the square root of 3 over 2 minus 1 half i. You can put this in the denominator and then multiply the top and bottom by the conjugate. And you'll see that the denominator is actually going to be 1 because of this. But anyway, I will leave this to you guys to verify on your own. And because 1 over z is the same as the complex conjugate, in this case, we're adding the original plus the reciprocal. So it actually doesn't matter which one you pick. Right? You can pick the conjugate version. The conjugate is the same as the reciprocal anyway. So that's the idea. But if you, just, if you would like, just pick the minus version right here and then redo everything and you'll really convince yourself that in the end you actually end up with the same answer. But anyway, this is a solution to that, right? So now we can just plug in this right here into this x and that x and then work it out. So let me just write this down. This is just the same as z to the 10, 24th power, and then we add it with. And of course, when you have this in the denominator, we can take it up and then make that to be negative power, right? So this is just z to the negative 10, 24th power. And this is the reason why you see this is important right here, because this is just z to the negative 1, okay? That's a reciprocal. Anyway, z is this, so we will have the following. Now, by we can just multiply this right here and here. That's it, right? And we can do the same thing right here. Okay, so much fun so far, isn't it? Okay, let's see. Cosine is an even function. So when you have a negative version of this, it's the same as the positive version. So in fact, this right here, it's the same as cosine of positive version of 10, 24 times pi over 6. And how about sine? Sine is a negative Right here, we can take it out because it's an odd function. So we have the minus right here, and then we have the i sine of 10, 24 times pi over 6, okay? And of course, this is the positive version, and this is a negative version. They, you know, add up to be 0. And right here, this plus that is just 2 of them. So in another word, we will have 2 times cosine of this guy. 10, 24 times pi over 6. And as long as we can figure out this part, we'll be done, right? Okay, so some of that. We'll see. Reduce this by 2, so we have 3 here, and then this is simply pi 12, right? Okay, and this is pretty much just 2 times cosine of 512 pi over 3. And to deal with this, let me just write this down. This is 2 cosine. Let's divide this out. So if you do 512 divided by 3, you get 100, let's put this down, right? 170, right? 170. And you have plus 2 over 3. But let me just put a pi right here, like this. And then let me add a 2 pi over 3, like that, okay? Once again, 65, this is pretty much a remainder, and then you have 170 pi. And what's 170 pi? This right here is the same as 85 times 2 pi. And why do we care about this right here? Well, 2 pi is a whole circle, right? And you pretty much just repeat this 85 times. You just go around this 85 times like this. And of course, the period for cosine is 2 pi, so this part actually doesn't matter. In another word, this is actually just the same as 2 times cosine, of just that, namely 2 pi over 3, like this. And you can do it whichever way that you would like. This is just 2, and this right here, cosine of 2 pi over 3, you get negative 1 half, okay? And in the end, 2 times negative 1 half, this is the most exciting part. The answer to this is negative 1, okay? And you see, this is so cool. And you can deal with this with any power that you want. Right? It doesn't have to be 10, 24. And once again, if you use the minus version right here, you pretty much are talking about uh, the negative version right here, and you will see, because you're adding the original with its reciprocal, like the power right here, actually still going to be negative 1. Okay? So this right here is how I wanted to do it. And as I told you guys, I will show you guys the second way. But of course, it would be better if I show you guys how did that person solve it himself. So it's right here. 
Okay, so hopefully you guys like this video and if you guys do, please give me a like and if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. I like to make math videos for you guys. And thank you guys so much for watching and as always, this is it. Uh -huh. With P, uh -huh. it becomes de poivre. Okay. And poivre means pepper. Oh, wow. <laughs> Alright, thank you so much, Dr. Payam. <laughs>